do we waste time in speculating our future? Let us aspire for a glorious one and create it. The rules of the game are constantly changing. Why should the rail industry be any different? In the last 10 years, most of the significant disruptions across industries have been because of an unwillingness to accept the current reality. Strengthening this is the shift in thinking from capability forward to purpose back. And capability forward thinking today determines tomorrow. In other words, you decide your future and what you can be on the basis of today's capabilities. And purpose back thinking tomorrow determines today. In other words, decide on what you want to become first and then determine what skills and capabilities you will need in order to get there. Capability forward thinking results in continuous improvement, whereas purpose back thinking results in continuous transformation. None of these prominent disruptors would exist if they had accepted the current realities of the marketplace when they were created. Furthermore, Bitcoin, Uber, Facebook, Airbnb, and Amazon are also recognized for their zero asset business model. They became an aggregator when they had no experience. Could there be a zero asset opportunity for Wabtech in the future? The number of media references to disruption is growing and growing fast. Typical decisions for any effort are made on the question, can we afford to do it? When it comes to innovation, it also helps to ask the question, can we afford to not do it? The following concepts are meant to raise these questions. How can we challenge the status quo? How can we push ourselves beyond our comfort zones? Could we alter our present considerations to find new solutions? What other alternative paths can there be for a solution? Why must the engineer step out to inspect every rail car and in between? How can the engineer complete his inspection from within the safety of the cabin? How can the proposed inspection yield significantly better insights than the current? was for a drone bot. In this concept, we use drones for an initial inspection and then for bot delivery. The airdrop bots then have the ability to perform detailed inspection. There are no easy solutions today to track and know the status of rail cars within a rail yard. Today's solutions are too expensive, too complicated, and simply take a lot of time. What if we had a multimodal drone that combines visual, thermal, and infrared imaging to provide more insights from the inspection? The solution will make the inspection faster, better, safer, and provide better insights from playback. There is no motivation for the rail car owners or lessers to equip the rail cars with ECP braking systems. How do we motivate the rail car owner to install ECP systems on the rail cars? Or is there a way to shift the responsibility of equipping ECP brakes from the rail car owner to the railroad? This proposal is for brake bots. In this concept, we use drones to airdrop an army of bots that will help convert the existing pneumatic brake systems into ECP for every car. The brake bots will also form an independent ECP network. Regardless of where the bots land on the rail car, they will be programmed to home into the pneumatic braking systems. The freight locomotive cabin is designed by engineers for engineers. Have we considered the possibility that the present cabin layout may be an influencing factor when it comes to driver distraction and fatigue? If there is a need to interact with so many levers and gauges, how will we ever be able to move to autonomous trains? 
Can there be a solution that rides on elegant simplicity? Who do we want to be inspired by? Can we move all the information to display on a tablet? Can we move the display from the physical world to the virtual world? Apart from the displays, can we move the controls to the virtual realm? Enter the world of augmented reality. Now a new question. If controls and displays are moved to the virtual world, why should the driver be within the locomotive? If the control of a locomotive is moved outside the train, can we manage more than just one train with a driver? Think of how air traffic control operates. Can trains be driven as a managed service? Can Wabtec own that managed service? Autonomous transportation has gained the most traction in the last five to 10 years. While there's opportunity once we get there, there are also opportunities along the way. The move to autonomous freight trains is a continuum. Where do we want to start? How do we want to transform the journey? How can we leverage interactivity as a feature into the PTC solution? Can it be the stepping stone for digitalization? While PTC today is there to step in in lieu of the driver, can we reimagine PTC as a driver's companion? One that ensures the driver makes no mistake. How can we leverage this interactivity? As an aid to perform safety checks? As an aid to provide safety warnings? As an aid for improved security? As an aid to performing an action? Artificial intelligence may have some benefits for us. Could it help shift from condition-based monitoring towards condition-based action? The AI market is expected to grow, fast, from $1.4 billion in 2016 to $60 billion by 2020, and up to $100 billion by 2025. Do we plan to have a slice of that pie? How can we use AI to help shift from reaction to instantaneous action both at the local level and at the network level, to modify instantaneous behavior to prevent in-service interruption or disruption, to determine why a component, a bearing for example, could be failing, to check for coexisting influences within the train, to modify performance in real time to prevent a failure until you are ready for it. Traditional manufacturing has been changing ever since 3D printing was invented. That was in 1983. In 2017, 34 years later, is it innovative to consider how should we adopt 3D printing? Or could we leverage the next manufacturing revolution to alter what my products are, how they are used, and how they are sold? How can vibrations help rather than hinder? How can we use materials that can alternate between a program state and a default state? Can we use 4D printing to create a new brake hose that is also an air valve? Can the brake hose also function as an EOT? Can the brake hose contract or dilate to increase or decrease the pressure without letting the air out? If we can 4D print a brake hose, can you embed MEMS and NEM sensors to continuously monitor air pressure across the entire train? When was the last time train signaling went through a complete makeover? We have only been continuously improving it. Is today's signaling solution good for the next 50 years? Are we ready to create the next disruption in rail signaling? The trains of tomorrow will need to integrate with the rest of the digital world, be fully autonomous, be able to make systemic decisions on their own, travel along highly trusted, self-aware, and incorruptible networks. How can we lay a path to get there? Blockchain may be relevant because the technology eliminates single point of failures, is hacker-proof, provides secure and instantaneous access, allows distributed storage, and cannot be controlled by a single entity. Despite the many use cases for blockchain, there is none for rail. Can we develop the first blockchain application for the rail industry? 
how about the world's first digital signaling solution? Truck platooning is the big buzzword in transportation today. We fear that a group of trucks bunched together is going to disrupt the railroads. In reality, trucks are merely trying to mimic rail. While trucks are working to mimic us, how can we leap ahead? How can we leverage our infrastructure to their disadvantage? By 2027, rail intermodal transportation is expected to outgrow non-intermodal transportation by rail and truck. What does our intermodal product portfolio look like? How can we own intermodal and make trucking an integral part of that solution? But first, let's see who else is trying to get into our market. Amazon has a patent on using intermodal vehicles as a launching station for drones to improve delivery. How did Amazon see a value in our market segment? Or more importantly, how did we not see the opportunity that Amazon saw? The primary cost drivers for electrification is the wayside installation. All that wayside infrastructure is designed to only deliver electric power to the train. What if we can electrify the U.S. railroad network with zero wayside components? We can provide the electricity on board the train. We pursue electrification of the train as opposed to the network. Would it then appeal to the railroads? Micro turbines may hold the key. And yes, the trucking industry appears to be highly interested in it. Imagine these two scenarios. Crude oil getting processed as it heads towards a refinery. Coal getting dehumidified as it heads towards a steel plant or power station. These are some of the new value we can deliver. What other processing can be enabled for some of the other primary users of the railroads? Can such value help keep the truck industry at bay? Here are some people who are working on the technologies you have seen today. Here are a few more triggers. How would you react to a headline like this? What excuses would you give about how we let one of our products become obsolete overnight? How much have vehicle doors changed over time? What are the things we take for granted about the door systems? Can you imagine a train door that is opened by a station door? What does this mean? Consider the New York subway. With 6,418 cars and six doorways per car, we have at least 38,500 door actuators. If we actuate them only from each of the 425 stations, New York City Transit would only need 2,550 door actuators. Can't be done? Elevators already operate on a similar principle. The elevator door actuators open the floor doors. The technologies in the proposals you have seen are at various stages of maturity. Some can be more directly applied while others still need to be figured out a whole lot more. The primary aim of this video is to show how a change in mindset can offer us new ways to tackle problems. We hope we have challenged your beliefs and pushed you out of your comfort zone. Let's get innovating. Remember, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams.